Hey everyone, Daniel Durand, welcome back to the Finance Channel. Here today, we have the CEO of Voyager, Steve Ehrlich, on the show to talk all about cryptocurrencies and the future of Voyager Digital. Steve, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. How, you know, I've been watching your stuff for a while here, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to be with you and spend some time with you and answer questions that you uh, may have about Voyager. Thank you so much. All right. So first and foremost, I want to start with what we saw in the month of May. Obviously, cryptocurrencies uh, had some major volatility, a major pullback within Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, etc. And, uh, you know, I'm assuming this was one of the craziest months in your company's history. So you know, I'm wondering if you could maybe comment on what you saw throughout the month of May pertaining to maybe new accounts, you know, volume and new deposits and it was a good month again, you know, uh, you know, March was really good. You, you, you commented on our quarterly earnings and where we were, March was a good month. We, we, you know, we did a little bit better in April and better in May. Uh, so it was all, you know, good months for us because volatility really is our friend. Uh, that said, it's not, you know, we saw a lot of people lose uh, value of their assets, but what we also saw was people buying more on those dips and on the decreases, uh, if you were lucky enough to get executed at twenty nine to thirty thousand on Bitcoin, you you you're now in the money to the tune of uh, you're up 20, 25 percent at this point. Um, but I think that we did see more deposits come in on the downturns, more volume come. Uh, consumers on our customers actually, as well, are crypto believers. They're not in and out uh, because of a dip. They're they're buying more and trying to grow their wealth, and it doesn't hurt that you get interest too. So we it was a both months, April and May, the first two months or, or months uh, 10 and 11 of our year uh, were, were, were good months for us. Oh, that, that's great to hear. And I'm, this is more from an investor's point of view, but uh, on your uh, June investor presentation, which was just released, it says that assets under management are at over $3.3 billion. So assuming that that's correct, you know, customer assets, you know, uh, kind of stayed the same month over month despite this massive pullback. So is that due to, you know, customers depositing more money and new people coming onto the account, you know, buying the dip, uh, kind of, you know, getting into the crypto industry and this uh, opportunity that we just saw? Yeah, there's, that's definitely part of it. And, uh, you know, was, that was the last number we announced. And so it's, uh, you know, we are seeing a lot more money coming on the platform still. Uh, again, I think people are really interested in this space and they're looking forward to you know, another opportunity to get money and to invest at a low, uh, at a lower prices than we all think it's going in the near future. So I look at this time as an opportunity. I said that earlier today on, uh, on Fox Business News was that, you know, this is an opportunity for people to get in uh, because this is, this freight train is, is going to roll ahead and it doesn't really matter if it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Cardano, Link, Voyager, it doesn't matter. You know, there's, there's, it's full steam ahead with good projects. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, another thing over the past couple of days and weeks, there's been a lot of new additions in cryptocurrencies on your platform. I think there's three over the past few days here. And I'm wondering if you expect that momentum to continue in the coming weeks and over the coming months. Uh, my goal is to put 15 more coins over the next eight weeks. Um, we will get that accomplished uh, with the team. We have a list of the ones we want on the platform. Uh, you know, I may wake up one day and say, I want to, you know, a 16th one. The team never knows with me. Uh, I might've done some reading and see, you know, see something, but I do encourage, you know, your viewers to, to tweet at, at me and at Voyager, you know, coins that they want to see, because we're going to be aggressive again and bringing coins on the platform. We just need volume at some of the exchanges for us to actually execute. You know, uh, I'd love to have a coin like SafeMoon, but it's only on a decentralized exchange. Uh, but there are other coins that are pretty popular that we're going to add to the platform. Yeah, so, so what does the process look like in adding a new coin onto Voyager? Yeah, a couple of things we look at. First and foremost, regulatory. We, we do our analysis of, uh, with council on security versus non, you know, versus utility. That's, that's core number one, because we want to abide by the rules as the SEC has, has set out. So that's one. And then two is we look at liquidity. We look at uh, market cap, liquidity, exchanges it trades on. Uh, that's important because we only want to work with uh, high level exchanges and market makers uh, and we know which market makers will carry which coins uh, those are some of our conditions for that but we go through a pretty rigorous analysis for each each coin to make sure that we're abiding by all the necessary rules to do that 
Yeah, no, that's great to hear. And, you know, Voyager has definitely, you know, you guys reported that you have been seeing elevated volumes of altcoin trading on your platform in comparison to Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I'm assuming that has continued throughout the month of like May, correct? Yeah, look, I think uh, I joked around today on, on a couple of calls I did. We were at the Piper Sandler Investor Conference. Uh, I spoke to a lot of, uh, of our long fund uh, investors and our our. PR firm has done a really nice job. KCSA has done a really nice job recently of, of getting me on a lot of broadcast network. And we're, we're the place for altcoins. And I joked around and said, if you don't hear me say altcoin twice uh, in an interview, uh, then I'm probably not doing my job because we want to be, we want to be known for, for the place to go to go get the most choice of coins and the interest on it. So that's important to us because I think a lot of people look at Bitcoin and think that's the most that's the asset you have to have, but there's such a pool of other assets we think really truly are important to the ecosystem and would like people to you know, encourage them to invest or at least look at those. Yeah, no, that's a you know, great differentiating factor on your platform. And you know, kind of shifting again to Voyager Digital stock, you know, I, I cover this a lot on the channel. I'm a shareholder. I'm also a token holder. I would use the platform eventually once you guys come to Canada. But um, yep. when we look at Voyager Digital stock, you know, using pretty much any metric out there on a valuation basis, Wall Street's valuing you guys on a very kind of very low, right? On, on in terms of like a price to earnings ratio basis. Why do you guys, or why do you think Wall Street is valuing you in that way? And maybe just the cryptocurrency industry as a whole. And how do you think that might change moving forwards? That's a great question. Uh, you know, we need guys like you who, who help us promote and get into the retail hands in, in Canada to buy our stock. I think uh, same thing on Coinbase. Their numbers, you know, we, we're, you know, we think we're growing faster than them from a percentage basis on a quarter to quarter basis. Uh, but it seems like they, you know it's kind of dragged down that IPO dragged down a lot of the crypto industry. But the other thing is, I think unfortunately we get coupled our stock with the price of Bitcoin, which is just wrong. Uh, you don't couple E-Trade stock to the price of Tesla, so why would you couple my stock to the price of Bitcoin? Volatility is our friend. When there's volatility in the market, we execute trades and. It doesn't matter if Bitcoin's 37,000 uh, or it's 67,000. If there's volatility, but, you know, that's our friend and we get trades and we, we generate revenue. Uh, so we'll say, I think eventually as we keep talking about it, we'll decouple and people will see the business for what it is, which, which I do think is undervalued in the marketplace. I mean, that, that's such a great point. I mean, just yesterday, your stock was down, you know, like 10% just because Bitcoin fell. Now, if something you guys had a great day yesterday, because obviously increased volume and whatnot, but, you know, hopefully that connection does break with time. And, you know, hopefully Wall Street sentiment towards cryptocurrency related companies, you know, kind of changes as adoption moves forwards. But, um, you know, a lot of these cryptocurrency stocks and, you know, especially Voyager Digital is uh, extremely undervalued compared to a lot of other tech com tech companies out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we're trying hard. We're working hard. The only thing we can control, and this is what I tell the team all the time, control what we can control. You know, we can control building our platform, getting it more scalable, bringing more products, control the things we can control and the market will do what it is. Let me do my job. I'll get in front of people. I'll talk about the stock and, and, you know, get them to understand how we make money. Uh, but continue doing your job. And the team does a great job every single day. Work their yeah. tails off every day. Yeah, that's a great mindset. And, you know, another thing I want to point to here, you know, obviously you guys had a phenomenal, you know, Q1, you, you guys in your fiscal year, it's Q3. Uh, so congrats on that. Um, obviously record revenue. Uh, when we talk about profitability, obviously you guys had operating income margins at 50%, which is, you know, absolutely phenomenal. But one of the things that suppressed profitability on paper was these outstanding warrants that you guys have. And a lot of these expire in late 2022. So is the plan of for those warrants to just kind of wait it out or, you know, potentially something else, maybe buy them back uh, potentially. Uh, yeah. Look, it's uh, the majority of those warrants are held by one player, one, uh, one entity. Uh, they've had them for give or take 18 months now. Uh, August might be two years. Um, it's their prerogative, you know, when they execute them, uh, they're all in the money. So they will execute them over time. It's a non, I never understood, uh, and I'm a CPA by trade. I got my, my career started after college in, in the CPA world. I don't understand um, 
the expense of the warrants. It's a non-cash expense and no, no cash coming out of our pocket. Um, so it's, it's very volatile under, they get valued using black shoals and our stock is somewhat volatile. So the, the black shell value of, of it is quite expensive, uh, but you know, we'll wait it out. I mean, it is, you know, it could flip the other way to us too, right? I mean, we recorded this big liability. If the stock's lower, then the warrant, warrant liability will decrease and we'll show this great operating, we'll show this great net income. And that's not true either. Um, so I don't, I don't, that's why you, you see our P&L broken out in different ways. I care about the operating, like what's the cash flow I'll put to the bottom line. That's what matters yeah. to me. You know, what, what's crazy, I, I kind of talked about this in yesterday's video, but there was a Seeking Alpha article on Voyager and one of, it was more of a bearish article. And one of his points was that uh, as you guys scale, your losses are deepening. So <laughs> I don't think he did his like kind of look into Voyager deep enough. And this article is going everywhere. It's, you know, it, it's crazy, but um the fact that he is kind of pointing to that loss and not digging in deeper when, you know, these warrants it has nothing, uh, it doesn't affect you guys at this moment in time. So uh, that's it's a obviously great to hear. Yeah, it's a non-cash item, right? So it has no effect really on our, our, our P&L. It's off the balance sheet, as you said, by uh, August of 22. So another year, a little over a year. Uh, look, our business and I, again, spending the time with investors today, which is pretty much every day these days, uh, about the business is as we continue to grow revenue, our operating margins will stay relatively about the same. Our headcount is catching up to the revenues we're doing. So, um, you know, the, the operating margin will be it, give or take in that ballpark. Uh, and that's what matters because those non-cash items don't matter. They're not burning our cash. And what matters in this business is how much cash you have long-term to, to keep growing and pay for marketing. So, you know, everyone's entitled to their own own opinions and write what they want. Uh, it's probably the beauty of seeking alpha. Um, you know, we 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 know the truth. In the end, we know what's what's accurate and so forth. So, uh, we're just happy again to what I said before. Heads down, work our tails off, keep growing our, our customer and revenue base. Exactly. And the, the last thing I want to touch on the stock here before we keep moving on, uh, when we talk about Voyager Digital Stock, it's listed on the OTC market and uh, the Canadian Securities Exchange. So I was wondering if you had maybe, you know, an update on uh, the potential uplisting to the NASDAQ or the Toronto Stock Exchange on that front. Yeah, we've been pretty open about it. You know, we, we look to graduate from the CSE to the TSX. We're hopeful in the very near future uh, that happens. It won't happen. I, I can almost guarantee it won't happen before. Uh, our year end of June 30th, uh, but it hopefully it'll happen shortly thereafter. Uh, and we're working hard towards trying to get to NASDAQ. It's important step for us. Uh, we have one of the top four accounting firms working with us to make sure that we put everything in place and, and working towards our SOC, uh, you know, getting you know, SOC oriented and internal controls and, and just doing all that to be NASDAQ listed by early next year. It's going to take us some time because there's things that need to be done, but it's all part of the maturation and the growth process of Voyager. Yeah. And, you know, last thing I just want to say to investors out there, you know, fundamentals continue to improve at Voyager. The stock market's all about perception. Currently, Wall Street's perception of cryptocurrency stocks is, you know, not too great. That will change with time as cryptocurrencies gain adoption and, you know, as the market realizes what Voyager is doing. So, you know, uh, anyways, let's move forwards here. Uh, on the topic of security, I know you guys uh, take this very, very seriously. Uh, what differentiates you guys from other competitors and how do you plan on optimizing security moving forwards? Yeah, I'll, I would just uh, say before I get into security, nothing what we're saying is financial advice. We're just uh, two guys, you know, talking about uh, things, you know, about the company with none, nothing with about financial advice. Uh, on security, you know, we have a, a, a bifurcated process. We hold the coins for customers. We loan some out. We hold some with different custodians. We take security very, very, it's very important to us. Uh, that's why we hired Dan Costantino back at the end of January. Uh, to lead our security charges. We've built that team out tremendously over the last four months. Um, and we, we continue. We think the safety and security of customer assets is very important to what we're doing. And we'll continue to spend, you know, an extraordinary amount of time and effort in making sure everything's safe. Yeah, no, that's very valuable. And, you know, moving forwards on this topic of security, uh, what are your thoughts on, you know, cold storage and potentially offering that in the future? Something we look at, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we're trying to be forward thinking on what the customers really want. 
Uh, we know that they want debit cards and we're working towards that. We know we're gonna get international. Uh, so we kind of keep our focus on, on things that can really bring a lot of value. The idea of cold storage uh, is something we toy with and think about, but consumers can take a good, good amount of the coins off the platform and put it into their old cold storage if they want. Um, you know, the problem with that is, you know, the, the effect that, uh, uh, you know, you might lose your pass keys, which is why you like us to begin with, because we hold all that for you. But, you know, we do have a process where we're holding some in cold, some in warm, some on, you know, different custodians. So again, back to the security, we take it darn serious and do our best and make it a number one priority for us. Yeah, for sure. That's great. And one other topic on this is insurance. I know you guys offer insurance on uh, US dollars within your platform, but is there any plans on potentially adding that onto crypto holdings? We have uh, FDIC insurance on all cash held on the platform, US dollars, not the stable coin. Stable coin is not insur insurable uh, under FDIC. Uh, some of our custodians, you know, most of our custodians have some levels of insurance that cover some of the assets we do. When you loan assets out, there's no insurance, but when we're holding assets with different custodians, we get the coverage under those. And we're looking at our own policies too to see what we can do as well to expand that, that product offering. Yeah, that's great. So next thing I want to talk about here is customer satisfaction. It's obviously very important within bro the brokerage business. And you know, over the past few months, you have you guys over at Voyager have made tremendous strides in improving you know customer satisfaction on the levels of you know uh, reducing waitlist times, deposit times, and withdrawal times. So you know, I'm I'm wondering if you could maybe give us an update on those uh, three topics. You know, the waitlist, deposits, and withdrawals, and uh, kind of give us a bit of insight into how that's going. Yeah, so waitlist, really, there's two ways people are on a waitlist today. Uh, one is if you're in the state of New York, you're going to be on a waitlist until we get the bit license in New York. Second, if you're on the waitlist or your account's pending, that means you didn't get through our KYC immediately, which means maybe you fat fingered your social security number or your date of birth. Maybe you gave us the wrong you know, uh, email address that didn't match you know, detailed records or addresses didn't match. There's a lot of reasons you could be in that pending state. In that pending state, you know, could take some time because that's a manual review by us. And we're putting all our efforts with our staff and doing all the other things that customers want, like anything we have to do for manual approval of any withdrawals or deposits. So we're putting a lot of our energy in for our customer service into a lot of other areas at this point in time. Uh, de deposits, you know, I'll, I'll address that by saying that, you know, sometimes there's delays. Sometimes it's the bank that you have as an account. Um, Sometimes the PII on the bank doesn't match. So the personal identifiable information, the bank account name might be different from the customer account that won't go through. So you might, that might get delayed. Uh, withdrawals is all risk mitigation. You know, we make sure that we have customers in different, we have risk tolerance on different customers. That's our own algorithm. And so there could be delays on withdrawals based upon how you fit into those parameters. And if you've had failed deposits with us where, you know, the bank never said you had enough cash, you know, you're, you're a little bit more risky to me than if, uh, you know, a good customer that's never had a failed deposit. So we have a lot of those little parameters that we use. So there's, you know, I know there is some stuff we have gotten and appreciate you saying it so much better in the last few months. We've got some strides to make, uh, spent two and a half hours with the team yesterday with Gerard Hanchi, our, our chief operating officer. And building out, working on building out, we want to be the best in class service by the end of the year. Uh, we've got a whole plan to do that. Uh, and we're starting to make changes in the app to give people uh, ability to, to, to answer their own questions, self-help in the app too. So it's a, it's, we're getting there. You know, we've grown so fast, we have to make some of these changes. You know, and what's great, I got this message yesterday. Someone put in a support ticket and got an answer back within 24 hours. So, you know, I'm really starting to see this across the board when it comes to, you know, Twitter, different chats on YouTube, much less complaints. And it's, you know, it's gotten much better. And obviously, you guys have experienced so much demand over the past couple of months yep. that was just so unexpected. So, uh, you know, kudos to you guys for, uh, you know, going out, upgrading everything and getting it to a high level. No, thanks for those kind words. Look, I, every customer is important to us. Uh, I grew up in a household. My dad was in retail business. He, you know, did taxes for years and we had, you know, he, he always hit me with, with, uh, with two rules. Rule number one, the customer's always right. Rule two, if the customer's not right, refer to rule number one. And so we try to live by that. You know, we're not going to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes. I think that's 
you know, the best part of us at Voyager is the fact that we do admit we're not perfect and we make mistakes. We're not, uh, we don't sit on a top of a mountain and say we're perfect. Um, so we're trying to be better and appreciate all the patience people have. We try to answer, you know, things, everything we can to make it better for consumers. Yeah. Okay. So uh, next, I want to talk about uh, new product releases. One of the biggest hurdles for releasing new products for you guys, and you've said this before, is expanding and scaling your platform to allow for more capacity, uh, again, and increased customer satisfaction to a level to a point where uh, the platform's doing well, and then you can start expanding new plat or new uh, new products. So I was wondering if you give us an update on uh, this platform expansion, this platform upgrade that you're going through, and how that pertains to you know new product releases. Yeah, we feel really good where the product is, where the scaling uh, of the platform is. I believe you know we we last announced 1.6 million verified users. Uh, we do believe that um, you know we you know we probably can handle three times that uh, at this point in time. And so we think that, you know, the scaling is getting really close to where we want it to be uh, with a goal of being able to handle 10 million by the end of the year. So uh, we're excited by all that. Uh, we're gonna be able to bring on customers, you know, even more and more uh, over the next you know, few months as we expand the product line now. Yeah, that's great. All right. So next thing I want to talk about the VGX token, um, you know, obviously we were on uh, Rob's channel, Digital Asset News uh, a few days ago, yep. and you made some, you know, very insightful comments that uh, about the token swap and how, you know, potentially by the end of June, roughly uh, the token swap might uh, you know start to take place and then potentially by September for the Voyager loyalty program. So is that still true today? Uh, those rough timelines? Yeah, we believe, you know, those are the timelines we're shooting for, uh, working with one of the, you know, one of our big exchange partners on the swap, uh, making progress. Uh, yeah, well, those are the timelines we're looking, you know, we're looking for uh, to get there, you know, end of the month, uh, have everything ticked and tied so we can start the swap, give people 30 to 45 days uh, to execute the swap and have a loyalty program come right behind that. Uh, because we need the swap to get done to make sure the loyalty program gets into place. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're working towards that time frame. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, when we look at my channel, I feel like I have three types of viewers. Number one is VGX token holders. Number two is Voyager stockholders. And number three is people who hold both the VGX token and Voyager digital stock. So I want to talk to mainly the people uh, who own Voyager digital stock. Why should they be excited about the Voyager loyalty program and the things going on uh, about VGX, despite potentially not owning it? Yeah, look, I think it's uh, the VGX is really important to everything we do. It helps us build community. Uh, it helps us build, and crypto is about community, right? In the end of the day, it's a decentralization tool, uh, decentralized currency, and it's about community. So we put a lot of time and effort into building this Voyager loyalty program to help build brand loyalty and customer loyalty. And that's why the token means so much. And we'll be able to give, give away more tokens to certain actions on the platform, account balances, trading, uh, debit card usage, and, and it's going to encourage behaviors, uh, but at the same time, it's going to reward people for being loyal customers. And I think that's really important to us when you think about crypto and in, in the whole ecosystem and, you know, the community aspect of it and driving our business. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. And, you know, looking at the current Voyager loyalty program, I was wondering if we could get maybe some info into how this might evolve moving forwards as you guys release new products, how you might build the VGX mm -hmm. token around that, maybe such as, you know, uh, crypto to stocks and margin trading and any other pl platform upgrades or new releases. Yeah, we have a lot of ideas. I can't give them all out because then they won't be fun when they come out. But everything we will do, uh, we'll have a basis to, you know, with the Voyager token, whether it's the stock trading, whether it's loans, uh, everything will have a piece of the uh, of the pie uh, related to the tokens. We have a whole plan. Like I said on some other uh, uh, podcast the other day that, you know, right now it's three tiers, uh, Adventure, Explorer, Voyager, and we could have a fourth tier. We can have a fifth tier. You know, we can lower the token numbers if, uh, you know, if we see the token go to $10, you know, it's not going to be 500 tokens anymore to get in. It might be lower. So we have a whole game plan. Um, you know, we're, we're, we want to read and react uh, in a lot of ways, see, what, see what's happening and then make some changes. But every new product will have some aspect of the Voyager token related to it. 
and wouldn't be surprised to see us add incremental tiers as people start accumulating more and more tokens. Oh, that, that's awesome. I'm looking forward to see what, uh, what happens with that moving forwards. Uh, now, next, a lot of people are looking at expansion into Canada and Europe as some major catalysts for Voyager. So I was wondering if you could maybe give us an update on kind of what's going on with that. Obviously, we know that uh, you guys need to scale your platform in order to yep. have the capacity to handle those users. But uh, you know, what are the steps that you guys need to take in order to get into those uh, countries and territories? Yeah. Well, let's take your 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 great white north, right? Uh, so the uh, working with the regulators, you know, we filed for exemptive relief. They've got a lot of applications for that, but working closely with them as a publicly traded company, we feel like we're in a good position. Uh, just waiting for that so we could actually launch launch our business. You might have seen over the last week or two, there's been a couple of exchangers and so forth that uh, have gotten in trouble for not being registered in Canada and not even filing for exemptive relief. So we don't want to go down that that road. So we we filed for exemptive relief. We're working with the regulators. Uh, in France, we've got our AMF license. Uh, we're regulated by the AMF. It's a PSAN license, I believe, uh, if I got that right. And once the system scaled, and we're really comfortable with it, uh, we'll you know we'll begin work on launching the the European aspect of our business. Uh, we have a lot of demand there. There's a lot of consumers that really want us to bring the product to to Europe. So completely excited by that piece um, as well. So. Hopefully, you know, we're working towards 2021 as the launches, you know, one's regulatory impact, we need the regulators, the other one is just the scalability to make sure we can handle uh, all the European demand. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And uh, something very interesting, a lot of people mentioned this, do you see guys or do you see yourself expanding into more than just North America and Europe over the long run, potentially to, you know, uh, Japan, Australia, South America, or, you know, Latin America? We do, uh, we do. I saw some of those responses to your question on Twitter, so I was well prepared for that one. Uh, but yeah, I, I, our goal is to be global. Uh, you know, but it, there, there's a thing when you grow a business that if you go too, too wide too fast, you usually do it pretty poorly. Um, so we wanna make sure that when we go wider with, and wider to me is more geographic locations, we have to do it really structured and get the right team to work with us because you need the, the, what the, you know, the boots on the ground in the local jurisdictions to make that happen. So we're gonna be really careful that we don't put the rest of the business at risk because we wanna grow too fast. Where I've seen this before, I was at E-Trade when we started to expand internationally and then eventually they peeled it back and I don't want that. I wanna go, when I go, I want it to stick. I don't wanna peel back at any point in time. So that we're very careful about, but we do see Latin America, Mideast, Asia, we see those as all as opportunities. Oh, that, that's phenomenal. I, you know, it, it's great from an investor's point of view, uh, seeing you guys taking this from a disciplined, uh, in a disciplined, a disciplined fashion, uh, obviously not getting into this market too quickly, making sure your platform is scaled and then obviously expanding. Uh, so obviously we got some big news uh, with El, El Salvador, uh, obviously recognizing Bitcoin as a legal tender. So, you know, what are your thoughts on this? And do you expect uh, more countries to potentially follow their lead and, and do the same moving forwards i do i think it's the tip of the iceberg i think uh you know good for them and, and there was some great news out of el salvador today too where they're doing some using like volcano power and, and you know to for, to make mining green that's great look i think all this stuff is the tip of the iceberg um i think it's really hard for anyone who thought that bitcoin was going to go from bottom left on a chart to top right with no pullbacks along the way or any other coin it doesn't really matter uh, even our own token, like if you think it's just going to go from bottom left to top right with no pullbacks, you know, that's not trading, that's not investing. I've never seen anything go like that. Some, someone said to me the other day, even Amazon was down 90%, you know, way many moons ago before it started to, to rise and where it is today. Uh, patience is something that we all have to have when we're investing. Um, you know, and I think that when you see El Salvador do that, it's again, just it's going to start this roll again. And I think we're starting to see the coin prices start driving up again tonight. And I think we're going to start seeing more and more adoption again, the next phase of adoption coming. 
Oh, that, that's phenomenal. I just want to add on to what you said about, you know, kind of volatility within cryptocurrencies. Obviously, again, this isn't financial advice, but it, it's almost like it's giving you so many opportunities to continue accumulating, uh, you know, your favorite cryptos, whether that be Polkadot, Cardano, Bitcoin, yep. you know, Stormx. And it, it, there really is no reason to say, you know, I, I missed out because, you know, when Bitcoin drops from 60,000 to 30,000, you know, it's your fault if you don't buy in that in that case, right? If you miss out on that, um, uh, you know, but in that situation, it, it's definitely an industry that is very exciting long term and has uh, you know a lot of opportunities along the way. Yeah, I'm I am I'm truly excited to be in this industry. Uh, you know, when I got in, uh, geez, three and a half years ago now, um, you know, I'm excited because I the opportunities are endless, um, and the the volatility is you know is frustrating at times, but it, it's definitely an opportunity. Uh, and I just think that there's so much to be done. Uh, and again, tip of the iceberg in El Salvador, tip of the iceberg in adoption. I tend to say the second inning of, of adoption. And it's just fun, exciting to be in this space. Yeah, that, that's great. I mean, just today, I think it was this morning, actually, Interactive Brokers announced that they're getting into the cryptocurrency space potentially by you know late summer or whatever timeline it may be. What are your thoughts on the legacy stock exchanges getting into crypto trading and, you know, how might you come combat that over the coming years? Hey, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we were before them here. We have uh, 61 coins, 30 bearing interest. We got a debit card coming. Uh, you know, I welcome the competition. You know, they're going to bring more people to to the, the, the industry adoption. It's going to help adoption. But when they want to go to the best platform, they got to come to me. So, uh, you know, I think that you know, it's, it's an opportunity for us to continue to grow with adding products. So it's exciting, you know, they're jumping on board. It just means that, you know, we have to keep our heads down and keep building more and more product uh, as we continue to grow. And, and again, you know, our mobile product is, you know, people use it all the time. They're on that app 10 times a day. So uh, we've got tremendous engagement. Yeah, that, that's great. And another topic, uh, decentralized finance, a lot of, or DeFi, a lot of people look at that as a potential risk. Do you see it as a risk or something that you may be able to implement into the Voyager platform uh, in the future? We look at it as uh, an opportunity. Uh, one is I think we, we, we take some of the complexities out of DeFi right now by giving people the interest on coins that normally they would go and have to, to work through a decentralized world. But the second part is, you know, we're always looking at things. Can we put a layer two on top of our stuff to give customers access to DeFi? But the majority of our customers are really excited about just participating in, in some of the DeFi with us and meaning that they're going to get the interest. Because one of the reasons to participate in DeFi is to get the, uh, get, get the yield. And we can give them that yield through a much simpler way. But eventually, you know, we'll work through how we can actually add, add DeFi to, to the product as well. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And, you know, kind of adding on top of the interactive brokers uh, argument, uh, you guys announced about a month or two ago that you're getting into stock trading, you know, you partnered yep. with Market Rebellion. Uh, so, you know, how is that going with them? You know, how far along are you uh, in that process? And, you know, is there a potential kind of date, whether it be 2022, 2021, where we can expect this, uh, uh, this feature to go live? We're looking at it, you know, we're trying to move as fast as we can. Uh, great partner in Market Rebellion, for those that don't know, Market Rebellion is owned by CNBC folks, John and Pete Nigerian and, and Dirk Muller. I spent a lot of time with those guys over the weekend in Miami. Uh, Dirk and I are longtime friends. Uh, we've known each other 15 years, so we're very comfortable in building this together. Um, we're excited by, you know, I have a, I have a spec on how I want to do it. Uh, the team knows and, we, you know, we've started to build towards that. Uh, no guaranteed timeframes yet on it, but, you know, IB is trying to come in my world. I'm going to their world too. I've been there before. Uh, I've built day trading systems before, so I'm not, I'm happy to be back in doing the equity side, but coupling it with crypto again. Yeah. So I'm, there's probably no use in saying how you're going to implement this into Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to keep that one close to the vest because I think we have some unique things that we're going to do with that. Uh, but trust me, when we launch it, I'm happy to come on and and uh, and talk about it. So when we announce it, yeah, yeah, that that's great because you know we had Binance a little while back announce you know four tokenized stocks yep. with I think it was Tesla, uh, MicroStrategy. I don't know what exactly what the companies were, but uh, what are uh, your thoughts on tokenized stocks? 
I think we're going to get there uh, at some point, but I think probably still many years out. And, you know, in the U.S., we have a very tight regulatory environment when it comes to offering securities options and futures. So I think there's the tokenized side of it. There's some great companies that do some things in that uh, tokenized exchanges, but I don't, I haven't seen an issuer yet say like, I want my security to be traded on a tokenized a secu you know, security token exchange. So I still think we're probably five years plus out. We will get there because it will help the settlement process quite a bit because uh, you could do T plus zero settlement. You could immediate settlement, which where it should be anyway, but today we're in a trade plus two days world anyway. Uh, so it's probably about five years out. Yes, it sounds good. And now, you know, talking about your platform, one of your biggest kind of differentiating uh, factors is that you offer interest on a, a, a large amount of your holdings. And uh, sorry, recently you partnered with Block Damon uh, to offer staking on your platform. So, you know, how is that partnership going? And, you know, uh, when do you plan on offering, if not already, uh, staking on Voyager? Yeah, look, uh, we will do the staking for customers. You know, the reason why we did the relationship with Block Damon is so we can give yield back to consumers again. And we will, instead of building out all the nodes ourselves, uh, you know, we could go through Block Damon to do that. Uh, we're, I saw the Constantine and team over the weekend as well. I think we're up and running with three of the coins. In the next, within the next month, we're going to add significantly more coins with yields on them. Uh, through Block Damon. So that's why I say, you know, we're just going to try to stay ahead of the others, but, you know, more yields, more product. We'll, co you know, uh, continue to kind of run, run with this piece of it. Yeah. And when we look at the platform, are you going to kind of like merge this with lending or is there going to be an option to choose between both? Because I, you know, I, I'm not sure, you know, exactly how it's going to work on Voyager, but something like Polkadot, you can stake, but I'm also assuming you can lend it. Yeah, you can do both, but our goal has always been to de-risk that balance sheet you know lending as a risk is much riskier than staking we'd rather stake more than we'd lend so it's a high priority for us to continue to, to stake coins rather than lend yeah and then kind of adding on top of this i've had a few questions of people asking if um uh, you expect the uh, the yields on these cryptocurrencies to go down with time uh, so i was just wondering if you could give some insight on that yeah, I don't really think so. Uh, we've seen a little bit of a decrease in Bitcoin, but we've kept our rates the same. Um, I think staking is built into the contract. So I think the yields are there. Um, and so we, we don't, we think that they're going to stay pretty static for the long, for, for at least the foreseeable future. So that's, that's our, you know, that's our anticipation. Um, you know, we, we're, we're hoping to be able to stake some other coins too, which, which have high yields as well. Yeah, that, that's great. Now, you know, when you kind of with attracting new customers onto the platform, interest is absolutely phenomenal. And one of the ways you acquire customers is through a referral program. And uh, yep. this is kind of one of the main ways you're doing that right now. But do you plan on, you know, experimenting in different ways of marketing uh, in the future? Yeah, well, I mean, look, we, we, we're, we're close to hiring a national agency to help us market. Um, we think it's important for us to get other channels, uh, use some of the personalities that are working with us today, uh, whether it's Victor Oladipo, whether it is Matt Barkley, uh, Marshall Falk, uh, Stephen Piscotti, these guys, and get them involved in some of our national marketing uh, to show people that, you know, there's a trusted person as well as a trusted brand to bring crypto into their household. So, yeah, we will get there. Most likely in July, uh, we will be able to, you know, hit the ground running. Yeah, no, I mean, I love the idea of using an influencer, uh, you know, uh, through marketing. I, I think it really builds a connection through, uh, uh, you know, different individuals across the board. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm really happy that you guys are going down that path, as I feel a lot of companies could be doing that, aren't doing that, or are potentially missing out on a large opportunity. So uh, kind of the next thing I want to go through here is, you know, go down the line of your product roadmap. Obviously, we know you have to scale before we release these things, but maybe just kind of touch on uh, each of them individually. So first and foremost, the debit card, if you could give us a bit of insight uh, into that and, you know, how it's mm -hmm. going with the kind of the planning of it. Yeah, look, I think that uh, the debit card, the part of the bring it out to market was getting the system scaled. Uh, we already have our payment processor. Uh, Pick. They're also our program manager. I've got a, a, I already have seen a copy of what the card looks like. Uh, the marketing team won't really let me have it because I know I'll show it around to everybody before they're ready. 
Uh, our bank is metropolitan commercial, they're ready for it. So we just have to do some development on that side. Uh, and get that you know get that really out there over the next few months. Uh, it's one of the big products that we want to bring to market. Yeah, and one of the I guess concerns that I've kind of heard on Twitter is that uh, you know Bitcoin is obviously very volatile along with other cryptocurrencies. And assuming that you potentially allow more than just stable coins as a form of uh, kind of payment using the debit cards, uh, how are you going to handle the situation with taxes? Because that's something that. You know, a lot of people are worried about, I spend my money, I got to sell my Bitcoin, I got to pay $50 in taxes here, $20 in taxes here. So, you know, how, how is that situation going to play out? Yeah, well, we do CSV files for people today so they can see. We're a little bit easier than exchanges because everything is versus a dollar. So it's a, a little bit easier to deliver uh, tax statements to folks. But by 2022, so after the 21 tax year, is a pretty good chance we'll be partnered with one of the tax providers. I think three or four of them came up to me in Miami. Uh, so I got a lot of business cards from tax tax software companies, uh, APIs, and we know it's important. We'll get it. We'll, we're going to work on something um, and hopefully have something for, for the end of this, the 2021 tax year. Uh, we're hopeful to have something. And, you know, talking about the credit card, this is something further down the line, correct? Yeah, credit cards a little further. That's definitely into 22. We got to get a bank that's going to do the lending, right? Because, you know, you're giving people credit, which means you're lending cash, which means you have to have a balance sheet or somebody to give you the ability to borrow off their balance sheet. That's awesome. Now, the next kind of product I'm going to talk about here, and I feel like it kind of went under the radar. Uh, you partnered with Lottery.com to uh, mm -hmm. implement like a payment processing solution using cryptocurrencies. So, you know, when I look at that, I, I can't help but think of almost like a Stripe, but using cryptocurrencies instead of fiat currencies. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm wondering if you could maybe give us some more insight into that side of your business, how that might kind of expand in the coming months, years, and, uh, you know, how you expect that uh, side of your business to go. Yeah, we believe in payment processing in the long term, especially considering we're given up to 10% on a USDC coin. We think people want to use it. So if we can, you know, hook up and lottery.com being one of the first ones, we would actually allow, you know, have money movement for people, you know, with the debit card, right? And so you can either do the debit card or you, you which has the rails and the MasterCard rails, or you can just do from your Voyager wallet to lottery.com and there's no, there's only the blockchain fees. Uh, we expect that it's going to be a very important part in the future and are working ourselves towards that payment processing. That, that's awesome. And uh, the next is financial products. So, you know, how do you see that going with potentially IRA accounts or uh, I think self-custody wallets was something on your product roadmap. So if you could touch on that, maybe. Yeah, we made an investment in an IRA product called Alto IRA. So we're, we're going to work with them on when we deliver IRAs. I'm not really sure. Uh, and the self-custody wallet we want to get to. But there's so many other things happening on the trading front and bringing coins to market and interest. You know, you can only back to you do too many things, you do them all poorly, or you just try to do a couple of things really well and you keep expanding on that. And that's really the goal is to keep adding IRAs on our product roadmap, small to mid sized business accounts are on our roadmap, self custody, while all on our roadmap, but no definitive time yet. Yeah, no, you know, what I love about this is that you have the future laid out, right? You have all of these different products, these different uh, sectors that you plan on getting into. Yep. Uh, but, you know, right now you're staying disciplined, focusing in on the crypto trading platform and making sure that's done very, very well, which, you know, I appreciate. I'm sure everyone who uses Voyager appreciates alongside that. And, you know, let's look out five, 10 years down the road. Do you see Voyager being looked at as a cryptocurrency brokerage or more of a, a potentially finance app? that is based on the blockchain? It's the latter. It's a lifestyle finance app based on cryptocurrency and the blockchain. That's been our vision from day one, but you have to take step by step to get there. Uh, trading was the first step, interest was the second step, and we've got all those other products to come to get there. But lifestyle app for finance on the blockchain. Oh, that's so exciting, Stephen. The last question here, I think this is very important. Uh, it also came off of Twitter. Are you still watching hockey now that the Rangers are out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, look, uh, I can, if I could show you in the background, I've got the uh, Islanders, uh, the Bruins on. Um, you know, that's our division. Uh, I don't know who to, to root for, uh, although uh, my nephew is a big Islander fan. Um, and I know a lot of Islander fans, so I'll probably root for the Islanders uh, to beat the Bruins, but then lose to the Lightning. So, uh, yes, I love watching hockey. 
Um, excited. I watched the Colorado Vegas last night. Great series. Uh, I think whoever wins that series wins the cup. Uh, sorry, I don't know if you're, you're, you're Canadian. I don't know who your team is. Um, I'm a Leafs fan, Leaf. so I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> sorry to hear that. Uh, it'll come. It'll, it'll come. But uh, uh, yeah, I have a lot of friends up in Toronto, obviously, because of us being listed up there uh, with the CSC. But uh, love watching hockey. Uh, give me any hockey game. I'll watch, watch any and all games I could watch. That's great to hear. Anyway, Steve, thank you so much for coming on the show. I don't know if you have any final words uh, to anyone involved with Voyager whatsoever, whether, whether it be VGX token holders, stockholders, users, floor is yours. <laughs> oh, thanks for that. You know, look, I am super thankful for where we are today as a business. And it's a tribute to, you know, the community of VGX holders, uh, Voyager shareholders, our customers, our employees, you know, so I look at it as like I have four constituents to work, you know, that uh, uh, that I work for. And it's it's the investors, as I said, laid out there, uh, the investors, the token holders, the, the VGX holders, the community, uh, all those guys. It's that's who I work for. I'm honored and blessed to do what I do. Uh, excited to come on shows like yours and, and, and answer the tough questions. Uh, never shy away from those. Uh, you know, uh, we try to do our best at Voyager. We really do. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. I make mistakes. Uh, but that's what makes us all better in what we do in the long term is learning from your mistakes. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to spend some time with you. Look forward to the next time and uh, look forward to having everybody as Voyager customers. Oh, it's been a lot of fun. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found some value in it, please consider subscribing and see you all in the next one. Bye.